chest throughout? What does he have to do to be a good linebacker? Uh, he just came in yesterday and was, um, we had a player interview, a player exit, on um, things that he needed to improve on. Uh, God, a bless, God has blessed him with great ability to run. And I tell you, to do what he did in the spring with uh, one wrist, I mean, you know, he had a pin in his wrist, and he was really just playing with one, one hand. And the fact that he went out there every day and he never complained, he never made any excuses, uh, he went out there and competed. Now, where did, what does he need to improve on? We went through a list of things, from his eye discipline to, uh, to being physical at the point of attack. But I get that. The more he's out there, uh, the more he's out there on the field, and the more he's in the film room, the slower the game will become. He, he sees it like a quarterback sees the game. Um, I mean, he can diagnose a play pretty fast. It's just right now, we got him running up the, the backside of you know a five technique or a backside of a three technique, not knowing where exactly where he fits. But when he does know where he's going, uh, he gets there in a hurry. Um, he, I, I, the fact that he talks football on a, on a high level to you tells you that he's going to come in and do all the, the small things in the off season to make himself into a competitive football player. I like what Chaz is at. I like what he stands for. Uh, he's a player that uh, his care factor is, is a plus 10, and he's going to do everything he can to make uh, UNC football a better team. When we're talking to a lot of the players this spring, uh, one of the consistent names that keeps popping up is Jeremiah Gimmel. They had a really good spring, and he's someone that really kind of surprised even some of his teammates. <coughs> I'll tell you what, and um, part of the interviews when we walked in, I, it, it kind of shocked me too that that came up as well. And you ask the kids, you know, give me one player that you trust and you respect. And unanimously, his name kept popping up over and over again. Uh, when I was here last year, you know, I was coaching the safeties. And, uh, and, I, and I kept asking, does he have a care factor? Does he have a pulse? You know, I never see any excitement from him. But I wasn't in his room. I wasn't in the room when Coach Eck was in the room with him. And I didn't know what a treat he was to have in, in the classroom. Uh, the young man speaks football on a really high level, and the fact that he can see everything on the football field uh, is, a, is, I mean, it really gives you an asset. Ask the guys who they trust, I mean, it's going to be him over and over again, from D. Ross to John Smith to any of our guys are up on the front. They really trust him because they know exactly where he's going to be. They know uh, as a comfort level, knowing that he's going to fit plays right. Um, he, he surprised me. I can honestly say that, that the fact that, when I'm in the classroom and he's just asking questions, not afraid to uh, say, Coach, that doesn't make sense. Can you explain it again? Uh, the way he sees the game is like a third or fourth year starter. So I'm, I'm very pleased on where Jeremiah is at. What's been the, uh, the positives and challenges to recruiting under the background came back to Carolina? What's it been like and, and how have you seen maybe a shift uh, between last year and, and this cycle? It's different. Um, you know, as, as a player, and when I came here back in 1989, uh, the communication thing was it was a lot different than it is now, of course, with telephones and Instagram and Snap and all that. Uh, Coach is one of those guys that's really up to date. Even though he's been away from the game for five years, he's up to date on all the latest social media, uh, from the Twitters to uh, what they're putting on their Instagrams or what somebody's saying um, in interviews. Uh, he's cutting edge. Uh, what's different now that's, that I think has probably changed from before is the fact that he was on ESPN. And I think this even sharpened his communication skills. Uh, you know, Coach has always been a great communicator uh, and always been a guy that can walk into a room and, and had that magnetic effect on everybody. Uh, watching him now, just how he uh, talks to the 18-year-old and 19-year-old is pretty dynamic. The fact that he... When I walk into a room, uh, no matter which family it may be, it could be somebody from a higher social economics to the lower social economics to black, white, doesn't matter. I've been in rooms before where the conversation was always the same, and it was well scripted. You know, we're gonna, you're gonna come here, you're gonna get a great degree, you're gonna, we're gonna take care of you like my family. It's all the same thing. Everybody says the same thing. Um, Coach Brown is unique in the sense that every story is different when a kid comes in the room. So it's not a rehearsed line, it's an experience. So he, he walks the kid around and walks him around the office and moves him around, show him the things he's done. You know, ask kids questions that are, some are very difficult to ask, some are uncomfortable. And then just as a coach, you've, you were learning to have his style. 
So now I think coaches on our staff are kind of following his lead to the fact that get off your script, get off the same things that everybody else says. Because one thing that 18 year olds do, the fact that we're in this mass communication deal now in today's game is social media. Whatever you say is gonna be compared and shared with other kids uh, in that same peer group. So for us, uh, the challenge is how can I be different than the other 100 and some uh, coaches out there on the market? He's given us that ability now of just watching him and learning through him the power of communication and the power of talking to young people. That's the edge I think that Carolina that's, that's different than it has been in the past. Tell me as much of a part as you were of some great defenses and coaching here as a GA and a full-time coach here. And defense has definitely fallen off here the last several years. Um, how much does that aggravate you and irk you and how much is that a motivation to you know, help turn it around? It's still player, it's, uh, it's always been player driven, you know, of you gotta have playmakers. Um, in the past, when I got here last year, again, I, uh, so many games, and I've never, I never experienced losing games, maybe four or five games in the last drive of a game, and that happened, you know, uh, over and over. Was it fatigue or just on the field too long? Was it mental assignments, mental busts, missed tackles? It's a combination of everything. Uh, and part of in the days, in part of today's game with the Temple offenses, it's easy to predict where you're at. You know, when you when you're running that many plays and that fast teams get pretty simple to figure out where you're at. So it's easy for teams to attack you. The thing that I like about what Jay Bateman does on defense is the fact it's multi-fronted, it's multi-coverages on the back end. You never know where a squat corner is going to be. You never know where the rotation of a safety is going to be. You never know what front the front is going to be in. So there's hesitation. If the quarterback can't just up and just throw the ball 1,000, 1,002 and throw it on rhythm, then now that kid has to be an actual quarterback. When the people upstairs can't look on the sideline and say, OK, they're in this coverage and tell the quarterback exactly where to throw the football, that becomes different for a cue. So the fact that we're doing so many more things on defense uh, and it looks so sophisticated and complicated, especially if you're on the other side of the ball. I enjoy what we do on defense now. I think, I think the fact that you know, last year we had so many injuries, and you never want to use injuries as a, as a crutch. But the fact that we're going to have back when, when the fall comes back around, the fact that we're going to have a Miles Dorn that's going to be 100%. You're going to have a Strobe that's just 100%. You're going to have uh, Miles Woolfolk that's 100%. Uh, you're going to have guys that it's been a long time since we have actually had a defense that we can say, that, okay, we actually got all our guys back. You, take, you took one guy, you know, if you look at uh, across the country from last season, most, country, most teams would be devastated if just one guy got hurt. Um, we've had that unfortunate bad luck of getting guys hurt in the past. You know, this year I feel finally for the first time uh, when we walk out on defense and when fall start, for the first time uh, since I've been here, it's, well, you know what, we might give ourselves a chance. You know, Miles has played a lot, a lot of plays. Stroh has played a lot of plays. AC, you know, was banged up last year. He's played a lot of football. And the fact we're going to have those guys back, you know, with the young guys that we had, like a Trey Morrison that was out there playing last season, the fact that we have a D. Ross that's played, you know, a lot of football games for us and a lot of experience. The fact that the Gimel has stepped up his game to the fact that he can now compete with a John Smith for the starting Mike linebacker position. Defense is something now I think kids, because of all the different multiple fronts that we're running, the fact that now they got to come in and study the game and got to be in your office and talking football. That's the difference that I see. I see the fact that kids now are learning a new defense. They come in asking questions. They come in and want to talk it. They want to learn it. So, you know, it's not, it's not to line up one or two different fronts and just say, okay, we're going to be the best at these one or two fronts. We're now have to be, uh, actually have to be pretty good at multiple fronts and multiple coverages. So that's the difference, uh, in my opinion, is the fact that with Jay being here in the, in the defenses that we're going to be in, it's going to give us a competitive edge against everybody we play. Just aside from uh, the schemes and playbooks, um, what, what are the biggest differences in the way that this program has changed in this year? It, it all, in my opinion, well, in the years from what year to what year? Well, no, just from, from this year, you know, this spring to the way it was in previous times when you were here. Oh, I'm gonna, you've got to remember, this is my fourth, this is my fourth, um, this is my fourth stint here as far as, you know, I, I played here in 89 and 92. Then I came back as a GA in 99 and 2000. Then I came here as a coach from 2000 and 2000, 2005 and 2009. Uh, I can tell you this, this, this is what I've noticed from from the time I got as a player when I got here. In 1989 when I got here as a player, 
uh, the comfort was bare. There weren't many Division One football players on our team. And the fact that it wasn't a surprise, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, that we ended up being 1-10. and ten. Probably could have won three or four games, but we still wasn't a team that was very talented. My last season, when we went to the Peach Bowl in 1992 and won the Peach Bowl against Mississippi State in Atlanta, uh, golly, you start thinking about all the draft choices from Rondell Jones to Tommy Smith to Austin Robbins to Bracey Walker. You can go on the line of just a number of guys in the NFL that played and had long durations in the league. Uh, so just going from that level from 89 to 92, what was the difference? Well, Coach Brown came in and he changed the talent pool. From when I came in from 90, uh, 99 to 2000 as a grad assistant, you know, Coach Brown had went to Texas, uh, and there was a lock again of players, and we didn't have a dynamic quarterback during that time. So just watching that time as a two years as a, as a grad assistant, we were okay. We weren't dynamic. If I remember, we went to the Las Vegas Bowl and won the Las Vegas Bowl, but we still weren't dynamic in all phases. So when Coach left here in 1997, I think, or 96, as I remember, I think there were 10, maybe one, 10 or 11 ball games. Uh, from on out, when I came here in 2005 and 2009, under John Bunning, where again, we were talent deficient. Coach Davis walks in and again, increased the level of the, the, the playing pool and recruiting. In 2010, and in my opinion, I was at Auburn at that time. In 2010, I really believed that North Carolina should have played for the national championship. They had the best players in the country, and especially on defense. Uh, even from uh, if you had the Robert Quinns, the Marvin Olson, Deontay Williams, the Cerseys, it was very similar to when it, when Coach Brown left in 1996-97. Those two defenses are almost a mirror with the Copels kids and the Peppers kids. Those two eras kind of mirrored each other on, on the talent pool of players that they had. So when I to go fast forward again, so I come in here this uh, last season, very similar. Okay, so as far as the number of draft choices, the number of draft choices shot down. Now you're seeing Coach Brown in his first year, in the first six or seven months, excuse me, three or four months he gets here, he would go from, what's 90-something in the country in recruiting, and we shoot up to at least, I believe, 30-something in the country in recruiting. So the difference is, and it's always going to be players. Do you have players on defense? Do you have a difference maker at quarterback? And I think now when, I, when, I, when the difference when you ask is, what do I see that was different? Well, it, the guys that won here always change the talent pool. The talent pool of players always increased, and with the increase, it became a lot more wins. Happened in, happened, happened in coaches last year, happened doing Butch Davis' time when he was here. So going, going pushing forward, what will be the difference this time? It will be the fact that Coach will win, the, he will win the state of North Carolina in recruiting. He will dominate the area uh, as far as uh, high school relations and also in the areas from Virginia to South Carolina and then start pulling out of Georgia. Uh, and that's been Coach's always, uh, his, his big uh, his draw, the fact that he can identify talent. he got Daryl Moody. Moody's on staff. Sparky Woods on staff has a, has a really good recruiting base of guys that can play. We don't just chase the five stars. He's chasing the actual, actual football players. So the difference will be that. It will be increase our, increase our talent pool here, and as you've already seen that happen before your eyes. The energy that they come on campus, again, if you probably could have felt that during the spring game, it was actual real energy when the, when the kids are on the sideline and the fact that they go to other places and they talk and they communicate on what a great time they had. Well, when they communicate that in the day's game, usually the, the word is spread and more kids will come, which, it was, which will end up being for us in the long run, better players that will be able to actually touch our campus and probably have a good chance of coming to UNC. Got time for one last one? Okay. Good. Thank you very much.